Welcome back in everyone. Today, as you probably noticed, we're switching gears and talking about a very important informational topic regarding damage tolerances and the effects of taking too much damage. If you've heard me speak about upgrades in the past on streams or prior videos, then you probably have heard the term trade-offs used because sometimes when you decide to attach an upgrade, you could be trading away one advantage for another. Some examples of trade-offs could be trading a lower center of gravity for increased ground clearance, good fuel consumption for more power, but in this case, it very well could be durability in the place of power. However, this is not true in every situation. As y'all know, I'm a huge advocate of giving players information and allowing them to make the best decision that suits them. One thing I believe we overlook is how good a durable engine can be, and also the effects from being damaged. I'm going to talk about a few outstanding engines durability wise, a few bad ones, and hopefully this information given to me by a viewer will help you further on making the right decision for you. Now before you run to the comment section and blast me for not covering all these engines that you're about to see here on this list in just a moment, just know that I shortened this video for time's sake. But don't worry, the information will be in the description of this video for your own viewing pleasure. So without further ado, let's get started shall we? Okay, so this is the engine damage condition chart. And as you can see, there's every vehicle in the game currently on this, this chart here. And looking at this for a first timer, you're probably thinking, what in the world am I looking at? But don't worry, we will go through this and I will help you understand um, these values. So you can go in and look at uh, a certain engine type that you want to look at and just see where everything falls and if it's a good fit for your play style. So we'll talk about some good things, some bad things. First, we'll talk about the good stuff because I want to talk about two outlier engines that I believe tower above the rest in this game. And then we'll talk about a few problematic engines that I feel um, should be looked at and should just kind of be you know, highlighted in a little bit of a sense, but there are multiple to look at. So I'm not going to do every one. So please don't fry me here for not covering an engine that you saw to be problematic. I'm just picking and choosing some. So and anyways, as a disclaimer, this is not going to be a super exciting video like some of my previous ones. This is essentially going to be me here in this chart going through this, giving you some information that I believe will be helpful on your journey. So with that being said, let's get started here on two outlier engines that I believe are fantastic that stand above most of these engines in the game. So the first one I want to highlight here is a military vehicle. A uh, U.S. military vehicle here is Navistar 5000 MV. It has the the AZ-12-1400 Delta Tango Alpha engine. It has 210,000 torque. And as we flow through this, you can just understand, I'm going to try to show you how I read this uh, to my understanding when I flow through this chart. So the first thing that I believe that makes this vehicle an outlier um, that stands above most of the vehicles on this list is... It has the highest damage capacity for any engine in the game. The only other engines that come close are the Tatran, the, um, the largest engine in the game, the Kilo Zulu Golf Tango 8 530 Tango engine. Um, that is at 300. And then also the India Mike Zulu uh, 8 330 Tango engine at 200,000 torque. And these are the engines for these vehicles here. So they are really good, really durable engines, but they do not have 360. Uh, damage capacity, which stands above them all uh, by 60 damage capacity. So it is just a really durable engine in that way. What makes it even more um, stand stand out, even make it even more durable is it needs to take 80% of this value to be considered damaged. So after it takes 80% of 360, it is considered a damaged engine. And after that, these next four categories apply to this vehicle so it's uh, damage consumption multiplier is increased its engine responsiveness is decreased of course its fuel consumption goes up which it already has bad fuel consumption so this you can see it's in the red so it means it's very bad and then something else is i think one of the most important parts of of being damaged is losing torque so i i think over all these things 
when you become damaged, you lose torque, you lose the ability to pull heavy cargo, um, opposed to being undamaged. So if you have a vehicle that is very durable like this and needs, needs to take 80% of this value, and this is a large value to be, to be considered damaged, um, but then still retain 70% of your max torque, which is 210,000. I don't think is too bad. Now in this chart, green is good. Um, later green is still good. Yellow is bad or yellow is trending toward bad and red is just bad, right? But 70,000, I mean, 70% is still a, a pretty good number. All things considered. I mean, it could be something like 50% or even 40% like up here, like you see, but it still retains 70% of its torque value, which is still pretty darn good. So, uh, I think here the next outlier engine, which I believe is the best engine in the game, uh, damage capacity as damage capacity and, uh, the ability to take damage and still have, um, a lot of torque is going to be the Indian Mike Zulu 12, 1000 Tango engine has 200,000 torque. It's the Tuz 420 Tatran. And I said that this vehicle was the best scout in the game. And this just is another layer on that argument there. And you'll see here in just a second. So it can take 300 uh, damage. So its damage capacity is the same as the largest engine in the game, which is quite respectable. Something I think that um, separates itself. So it, right here are these two lines. If you just want to go over and and compare these two. So right here, this at 60% of this value here is considered damaged. However, the 420 needs to take 99% of that number. So this would, it would need to take 297 damage total to be considered damaged. And then all these things apply here. And then the next thing that makes this the most durable um, engine in the game is it retains 100% of its torque. There's no other vehicle in the game that currently can do that. So it is the most durable engine in the game. It retains 200,000 torque when you hit 297 damage um, out of 300, which not many people do that in one go with this thing. So it's very hard to damage this thing to that point. Um, if you do, uh, gosh, I would say that's uh, it's pretty respectable if you can really beat this thing up that bad. But if you do beat it up that bad, um, it will still roll with 100% of its torque until it's completely broken. So the Tatran is a force to be reckoned with. And those are just two engines that are fantastic. They have values that I have not seen across this chart in any other way. So I wanted to just tell you guys about those as well and just highlight those and and uh, and just show you that. So now we're going to talk about some uh, some bad examples, not necessarily bad examples, but a few examples that are just alarming in some ways. So then you can just kind of uh, pick and choose which one will be right for you. And I just wanted to highlight a few that you could just keep an eye on here and there. So let's get started. So when talking about some problematic engines uh, in the game, I'm going to talk about a few, but in the intro, I talked about trading engine power for durability or trading durability for engine power. And I think our first example here is, is a prime example of this. And we're talking about these KR pieces right here, these KR engines. And this is part of the RU Scout old. And as you can see, as you increase torque rating, you actually start to decrease your damage capacity. So engines, vehicles that have this engine here are, are in this uh, compatible vehicle section. This is a 72,000 torque engine. And then the other engines that are below it, um, they, they decrease, right? However, whenever you go, move up here in this engine type, as you can see, it, the damage capacity is decreased drastically. So the KR Custom engine is really not a uh, a very durable engine, and on top of that, it has to take forty percent of this value to become damaged. So there's not much damage that you can take to this engine before it becomes a damaged engine. And after it becomes that damaged engine, as you can see here at seventy two thousand torque, it only retains sixty percent of its max uh, torque multiplier of seventy two thousand, which isn't that good. So this is something that you might want to keep your eye on when you're thinking about going from one engine to a next. 
uh, because like I said, sometimes you're trading something. So there is like a trade off. So you're trading durability for engine power. Now, this is not me saying that you should use a less powerful engine. I believe you everybody can use a, pow a more powerful engine upgrade. You're just going to have to drive smarter or you're going to have to have repair points to to keep this thing above this this damage threshold, because if not, you're, you're not going to be very powerful. Um, which isn't a huge deal for scouts because I don't think they're really power starved in any way, but just because they're so they're so light, but it's something to keep your eye on. So let's move on and talk about some other engines here. While the effects of damage on scout vehicles really doesn't affect them that much when it comes to performance because scouts are lighter, they don't necessarily need a bunch of torque value to be competitive or even to have better performance. They usually have high power to weight ratios, and if they become damaged, they usually can just repair themselves to get them above that critical damage threshold and back to a normal point where they, they're not losing power. However, when you're in a hauling class vehicle and you hit that critical damage threshold and you lose that max torque multiplier, that can be really rough on a vehicle, especially if you don't have much torque to trade. and if you're hauling some heavy cargo uphill or through the elements. So a perfect example here on trading durability for power is the RU truck old template. And this is the set of engines that these vehicles right here share. I believe the um, step uh, 39331 Pike is also added to this list. So as you can see, um, as you go up in engine strength to the last six TA240, which is the strongest engine of this type, you see that it does increase in damage capacity until it hits the final engine at 185,000 torque. So it's 25,000 torque above the IMZ 6 to 10, and you're gaining a lot of torque. However, you're trading half of your damage capacity. Then on top of that, you are at a critical damage threshold at 50%, meaning that if you take 60 damage to this engine, um, you lose... A lot of torque so you go down to 60 percent of this value not a lot of value to trade especially at 185,000 is isn't above 200,000. so it's still a strong engine don't get me wrong but when you're hauling heavy things which we all like to do in the game when you are giving away that much of your torque it does hurt so a vehicle that i did mention that was a glass cannon was the krs 58 bandit and I mentioned that because its tolerance values were so low. And this was one of the reasons that I did uh, call it the glass cannon because it was just, it's such an amazing off-roading vehicle, but it just can't take damage. It's great that it has a roof rack and I believe that kind of saves it. Um, but whenever you bump yourself under that, that threshold, um, it really can hurt, especially when you're hauling cargo, like I said. Okay, let's move on here talk about some other engines really quickly and then we will conclude the aat 6v444 engine has 42,000 torque this is shared with the chevrolet apache and the chevrolet ck1500 and as you can see um it only can take 100 damage and its critical damage threshold is in the red here at 40 percent meaning that if you take 40 damage to this engine so 60 out of 100 damage capacity um if you only take 40 damage, basically, it becomes a damaged vehicle. And then, as you can see here, you lose 50% of your torque, which isn't a terrible thing unless you're hauling a scout trailer. So just keep that in mind. Another vehicle I didn't actually highlight was the uh, the KC GT8 490 uh, engine. But the thing is, I don't think this is a factor because most people are going to choose the bigger engine because it has much more damage capacity and then also its damage threshold is much higher but this is also something um, just to keep your eye on so make sure you do another one i did not highlight was the uh the exclusive ford f750 engine i did mention that its damage damage capacity was only at 100 uh damage and at 60 percent of its threshold it's going to increase its consumption multiplier by 250 and lose out on a ton of torque rating. But anyways, even if it does start to consume more fuel, the F750 really doesn't use much fuel to begin with. And also it is like a mobile repair refuel station. So there's not really much, too much to worry there. There is ways to mitigate this stuff here on this list. 
The next thing I wanted to mention is, is the, uh, this series of truck, the US Modern series. And as you can see here, the SI uh, 8V2300 only can take 160 damage and 50% of that value, it means it is damage. However, the good thing is, as you can see, there's green here, meaning it doesn't consume that much more fuel. And these are mild values coming across the board and it still retains 80% of its torque. So even though it becomes damaged at 50% of this value, it does still retain some torque. So there are some, some good things about this and some bad things about this as well. So last, a couple, a couple of these last ones here I want to just talk about is the, uh, the GB eight V 2300 C. This is the engine that I would use, um, in lieu of the 2700 Tango engine. As you can see, the 2700 Tango is shared by all these vehicles in here, pretty decent damage capacity, decent damage threshold. Uh, the con consumption multipl multiplier is still pretty good or modifier is pretty good. And also it retains 80% of its torque value, which is still a good engine. So you're not necessarily trading, um, torque for durability. You're actually gaining both as you increase. So this is, this is a good engine series at 192,000 torque. Um, even though you will use more, more fuel with this engine. So this one here was a, an engine that I would use in lieu of this engine just to kind of save fuel. However, you can see that 150 damage capacity and 50%. So at 75 damage, you're going to start seeing these numbers come up and then you only retain 60% of that torque value at 160. So that's just something to look out for. And then you have some of these exclusive engines for the Western stars. Um, they have a higher, some higher torque ratings at 210, 220, and 230. And you can see here the Dairy Longhorn 4520 as well. They don't have very good values when it comes to damage capacity and their damage threshold is pretty darn low. And the, the highlight here is actually the Western Star series because it doesn't take much to get them damaged. And then they also lose 60, there's, their torque goes down 60%. However, they do have a lot of torque. They're not very heavy vehicles, so you still will have a lot of torque to pull things. But this is just something to keep your eye on. However, they do not, none of these engines, as you can see, really use much fuel when they become damaged. So that's kind of a good thing. Um, the consumption multiplier or the modifier is actually not too much. But things I would be concerned with when you're looking at this chart is how much damage can they take? What is the critical damage threshold? And then also for hauling class vehicles, what is the max torque multiplier? Meaning, am I going to lose all of my torque when I become damaged? So those are things that I would look for. Fuel consumption, I am super big on fuel consumption, but when you're hauling uh, cargo and such, I think torque is the main thing. You want to be able to keep your power to get to where you're going or to potentially get to the next uh, repair refuel station to get these things ironed out and back to normal. So those are just things to look at. Okay, so let's go through here. So as you can see, 50% of 90, or 19 or 190 is not that good, but it still retains 80% of its torque value, especially here with the uh, the CT681. Um, a little bit more of a damage capacity, still 50% 50, uh, 50 torque, 50% uh, of this value, sorry, but still pretty decent engines. Now let's move on here to the the old US old truck series. And as you can see, I have a few highlighted shared with a lot of vehicles here. And this is probably one of the worst values that you could possibly see here. But this engine is usually replaced with this engine here, the SI2100 Tango. So, and it's not that much better. So these numbers are pretty darn bad and you're losing uh, a decent amount of torque, 70%. Uh, you're retaining 70% of your values, which isn't that bad whenever you actually have your multiplier. But one I did want to highlight here that I don't have actually highlighted on this list is the MH100, the Westline V6 2400. Now, this has 140,000 torque. The other engine that you could use with this vehicle is this engine right here, which has 5,000 more torque. Now, Here's the difference. It's either you're trading torque for durability, or you take this engine that has more durability and retains 80% of its torque value when it becomes damaged. The only thing is this has more torque 
and it does have better fuel consumption overall from my testing. So you're giving up 5,000. This is completely your shot, your call if you want to use the more torque and drive safe or drive like a madman and have an actual a decent damage capacity there. So that's something that you can choose. And this is the reason I made this video is just to give you some information so you can choose however you want to play. But personally, I'm always going to choose torque because I know I drive safe and I know I have um, fuel stops and also support vehicles to get my vehicle back to uh, back to speed. Okay, so the last um, vehicles engines I want to mention here is actually the Westline V16 M2450. This is the second largest engine in the game. Tied with the second, the Azov uh, Sprinter has 250,000 torque as well. For being the second largest engine in the game, I expected these values to be higher, be somewhere comparable to the strongest engine in the game, maybe a 300 damage capacity and a higher critical damage threshold. However, it's at 50%. So whenever you take 140 damage to this engine, you will become damaged and your fuel consumption goes up a lot. Actually, it's the second highest here for fuel consumption. Um, you know, you guys know that the Paystar, a lot of these vehicles on here do consume a lot of fuel. So that is something to look out for. However, you still retain 70% of this value. So you're not losing out on a ton of torque, but it's just something to keep your eye on. So anyways, guys, I hope this helped you out. Hope this wasn't too boring. Um, this will be in the description of the video. And also there will be more videos coming out soon. So more streams with me and Max Power and potentially other games and also maybe some mod maps and maybe some more hardcore gameplay on my hard mode, which is in Wisconsin as well. So have a wonderful day, guys. I hope this helped you out. God bless. And as always, stay upright.